Have you ever wondered how people can tell if a private investigator is following them? If you said yes, then this video is for you. Welcome to the PI Guy, tips, tricks, and advice for professional private investigators just like you. My name is John Morris. I am a licensed professional private investigator in Colorado. Okay, let me first say for all of my friends and followers and watchers out there that do surveillance, when I do these type of videos that explain some of the secrets, if you will, about surveillance, I am not providing any more information to the general public out there than what is pretty much already out there on the internet. My intention is not to aid the enemy, so to speak. I get comments from time to time like, don't tell them all of our secrets, but that is the furthest from what I am actually doing. Folks, if somebody is looking to find out what PIs do when on surveillance, looking to see how to tell if they're being surveilled or followed, well, there is tons upon tons of information out there already. Any good internet search will reveal all of our secrets, and anybody who is represented by legal counsel for cases such as personal injury, workers' comp, and even civil matters like child custody or divorce will probably have already been warned by their legal counsel as to how we might go about trying to surveil them. My intentions with these videos is to help surveillance investigators understand how to do their job a little bit better. Getting burned on surveillance today is just a part of the job anymore, and understanding what the subject of surveillance may be watching for is crucial information to have, to be sure. Know your enemy, know yourself. A great quote from Sun Tzu's Art of War. I read this book many, many years ago and have found ways to apply it to so many parts of my life and business. And this one little line stands out more than ever to me. Basically, folks, if you know your subject and you know yourself, you will succeed more times than not. If you do not know your subject or you do not know yourself, then you will not succeed more times than not. And knowing yourself, folks, is knowing your weaknesses, knowing what the enemy, your subject, may know about you before you ever start the job. This will help you out immensely while you're out there on surveillance. Okay, let's get started with some details of how a subject may know that they are being followed. But first, really quick, go down, hit that thumbs up, and subscribe to the PI Guy channel to show your support for the channel. The first thing that a person should do if they suspect they may be under surveillance is do a little self-administered reality check of the situation. Is there any real reason you might be under surveillance? I mean, any real reason. Do you have an existing insurance claim for something like an injury or another claim that might be considered fraudulent? If so, why might it be considered fraudulent? I know many people think that almost every personal injury claim and every worker's comp claim is investigated, but that just simply is not true. From my experience, what I have read and people in the insurance company have told me when I've spoken to them, the percentage of claims actually investigated is somewhere south of 5%. As a general rule, there has to be some big red flag that has popped up for the insurance company to decide to open up an investigation. And even if the insurance company does open up an investigation, it does not mean that there is surveillance being conducted. Now out of that 5% or less of all claims that may have an investigation, I would estimate that less than 20% of those ever have any surveillance conducted on them. Surveillance, folks, is a very expensive route for the insurance company to take. And to be quite frank, the least likely route except for the most egregious cases. The first thing to remember about being under surveillance is that all people, no matter how skilled they think they are, are creatures of habit. As a private investigator, you should work this to your advantage, especially considering surveillance work. Your subject will most likely get up about the same time every day. Your subject will most likely drive the same route to work to the grocery store, the daycare, or wherever they go every time they go there. Your subject will most likely shop at the same grocery store, liquor store, convenience store, and other retail businesses. Your subject will most likely have the same routine for getting the kids into the car, doing certain chores like taking the trash out or mowing the lawn or going to medical appointments or what other appointments they have to make. It is just natural. We like to do our grocery shopping on Saturday mornings or whenever, mow our lawn Sunday after church, or take our kids to the park after school or whatever it is. We just prefer schedules and routines, which is oh so obvious to the PI who pays attention. Now, if your subject is aware of this, they will change up their routines. They will take a different route to work, the grocery store or the daycare, or wherever they go every time they go. 
they will probably still have routines in there. Maybe they have three routes to work and change it up a bit, but it may become obvious that they are watching for the same vehicle behind them all of the time while they are doing this. How do you as a private investigator overcome this? An easy way is to change vehicles, if that is an option for you. When I did a lot of surveillance, I always tried to have multiple vehicles at my disposal. It makes a lot easier if you use one vehicle one day and another vehicle on day two. You could also get a rental car if you think the subject may be suspicious. Another telltale for a surveillance investigator is the vehicle itself. We all have those dark tinted windows on our cars, don't we? And we need to. It's a surveillance vehicle, right? But how dark is your tinting? Limo tint? Well, folks, this is a huge giveaway for a surveillance vehicle and may also be illegal in many states. I prefer using the darkest legal tinting available, then use my blackout foam core cutouts to put in the window if I need further cover inside the vehicle. I also, weather permitting, will try to have my window down or my passenger window down when I'm following the subject so the vehicle looks slightly different. What kind of a car do you have for surveillance? Is it a boxy four-door sedan like the old cop cars? Yeah, you know what I mean. I have seen people use these types of cars and they always get burned all of the time. One of my first cars was a black sedan with limo tint, and yes, you guessed it, I got burned a lot those days. Nice car, very fast, looked cool, and it stood out like a sore thumb. To overcome this, just drive down the highway, the freeway, or any busy street in your area and see what are the prevalent types of cars around where you live. Around here, it is what we call the soccer mom SUVs. These replaced the minivans of years ago, silver or gray, usually in color. As well, pickup trucks, white especially, and Subarus or any other good four-wheel drive vehicle. I wouldn't recommend a pickup for most situations, but the Soccer Mom SUVs or just about any Subaru fits in really nice around this neck of the woods. Okay, what are some of the other things that a suspicious subject might do to try to see if they are being followed? Really quick, I know I ask this a lot, but folks, it really does help the channel out a lot. Please go down, hit that thumbs up, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. It really, really does help a lot. Changing up routines is big when driving to see if somebody is following you, but another good trick is to go through a parking lot just to go through a parking lot. I have observed suspicious subjects do this often in the past. They just pull into a grocery store parking lot, drive across, and then they get onto another road. Now, whenever I follow my subject and they pull into a parking lot, I try to go right on by and I find another entry down the road to pull into that parking space or I'll find some place across the street where I can get my video. This means, folks, you have to be paying attention to what is ahead of the subject and not be tunnel visioned on the subject. Looking ahead and thinking ahead will reveal many great opportunities for you. Alleyways are another good shake route for the suspicious subject. If they pull into an alleyway, do not follow them in, folks. I know you may lose them, but you may get burned and you may get ambushed. If the subject wants to confront you, this is a good place to do just that. Also, do not just go around the block in the direction that they went. I know this is very tempting, but if you do that, you may just meet up with them as they exit on the other end, and then you are burned to be sure. So, what can you do? One thing you might do is just park immediately and go on foot and sneak a peek down the alley. If they pull into a garage or a parking area, you're hopefully going to see them. Another thing is to go around the block the opposite direction and get a view down the alley from a distance. If they see your car, though, in the rear view, then they may get more suspicious. Now, here are some other tricky things that subjects may do if they think they're being surveilled, folks. Parking into a parking space for five or ten minutes, letting you get set up, and then they just drive off again, watching to see what you do. Parking in a parking lot, going into a store really quick, and then immediately coming right back out, and they get in their car and they leave. This gives them the advantage to scan the entire parking lot when they exit the store to see if you are parked or if you're on foot trying to follow them inside. Switching cars is big too. The subject may have two cars. Leave in one car, go to a store, go back home, get into another car, and then they go somewhere else. Or they just return back to their house and then they leave almost immediately again. Sudden or frequent U-turns is something to watch for too, folks. Remember, three rights and a left make a route reversal too and can be highly suspicious. Sometimes people are just lost. Sometimes people just act that they're lost. I have seen suspicious subjects just stop and get out of their car and look around 
or act like there's something wrong with their car so then they can take a moment and look around and check out what's going on around them. No use of turn signals or incorrect use of turn signals is a great trick that they may use too. Coming up to an intersection, turning on the left turn signal, then suddenly going straight or turning right. They may use this while watching your turn signal. Did you hit your left turn signal right after they hit theirs? Then they turned right and you turned right too? Yeah, you signaled left, you turned right when they turned right, you're burned. Folks, as you can see, there are so many ways that a suspicious person can try to tell if they are being followed, but there are just as many ways that you can protect yourself and the integrity of your surveillance as well. Making sure that you stay alert and you're thinking ahead is what a professional private investigator will always do. Hey, here are two more videos that I made just for you. Please go down, hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button to show your support for the PI Guy channel. And remember, folks, remember, folks, Stay safe out there.